Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Off-Grid Scorpion Stratus V2. This is an upgraded version of the Off-Grid Scorpion. I know you guys are like, it looks exactly the same as the one that you reviewed in the past. And it is extremely similar. There are a couple of changes I'm gonna go over. It's not gonna be a full review. Uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna let you guys know, this is a knife that I very much love. Uh, this is a knife that I've been recommending since the first time I handled it. Uh, really like off-grid knives. I really like the owner, Carrie. Uh, and uh, I've just had a really excellent experience with them. Um, I'll link this down below so you guys can check it out. Um, so, uh, yeah, right at the beginning, I'm going to tell you guys, I recommend this knife. Um, I think it's one of the uh, hidden, kind of hidden gems of the knife world. I, I think it's super duper underrated. And I think a lot of people would really enjoy this if they handled it. Um, but I am a reviewer. I have a couple of critiques. Um, so I'm going to go over that if you care to sit and listen. Thank you so much to Off-Grid Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We're going to fly through uh, some of the specs here. If you want to get the full you know, review, if you want to check out the full video, where I ramble on for 20 minutes. You can check out my old review of this knife. Uh, overall length, 8.75 inches. Uh, blade length is four inches. Cutting edge is 3.75 inches. Really, really awesome ratios on this guy. Um, let's go ahead and do just a couple of size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, which is up here today for some reason. And how about like the Spyderco Para 3? So there you go. Big boy, definitely not a, a small knife, but it doesn't carry like a monster knife either. I think that's important to remember. How about up against the Benchmade Bug Out for a final size comparison there? There you go. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile here real quick. Nice, very nice action. Still exactly the same as I remember it. Uh, yeah, it's no thicker than the Spyderco Para 3. I realize these are aftermarket scales, but it's, it's I'm sorry, it's a tad bit thicker, right? Um, so not anything too crazy. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here, this guy is about as long as the Para 3, even including the flipper tab. It's still not quite as tall as these guys, though. It's definitely not a short knife this way, right? But it's not quite as tall. So if you've been carrying the PM2, you're probably not gonna have a problem with this guy. Uh, hardware check. This is one of the big changes. Well, I see. For a lot of people, it's not a big change. For me, it's a big change. It's a big deal. You can get my tools right down in the description where I talk about my tools and at the top of the comments sections. We have T8 across the board now, which is just fantastic. The old one had T6 hardware, and that just bugged the crap out of me. Now, the pocket clip screws are still T6. That's fine. All of these, though, like the adjustment heads or the disassembly heads, um, those are T8, which is really nice. Same with it. You're never going to need to take the lock bar insert out, but those are, that's T8 as well. Really nice, minimal, right? There's, there's three, but I'd rather have six T8 heads than four T6 heads, right? Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I think that's really cool. Blade stock thickness. I think these are 155 thousandths. By the way, these are not made in the United States. I think everybody knows that by now, but I'm going to go ahead and say it for anybody who doesn't. Not made in the United States. Uh, yeah, saying 157, I bet it's 155,000. That's fine. It's always worked well. Um, one of the other upgrades here is that, uh, well, now, bear in mind, I say upgrade, um, right? But it's more of like, you know, flavor of preference. <laughs> flavor of preference change. I know that people almost universally consider M390 or 204P or 20CV to be a better or more premium steel than S35VN, which is what this guy was using. But as I stated in one of my previous videos, steels like S35VN don't really cost that much less from the, for the manufacturer to purchase them from Crucible than steels like 20CV, right? Sometimes there's, it's more, I mean, <clears throat> It's really cost of machining and the final shape that a knife takes, right? Um, and there are properties of S35VN that some people will find more preferable than M390. For example, toughness and ease of sharpening on S35VN are much preferable to M390. If you did not know that, S35VN is tougher 
than M390. M390 has better potential edge retention, but S35VN will resist chipping much better than M390. So, whatever your preferences are. Most people will consider the M390 an upgrade, but that is one of the changes. Uh, I think most people will find a, pref a, a preferable change um, to the Scorpion, so that's kind of neat, right? And M390 probably does cost just a little tiny bit more uh, for off-grid knives to acquire than S35VN, right? Now, this knife costs a little bit more. Uh, it's now $260, which I'm going to be honest, I think is a bit high. I don't find it to be outrageous. Some people are going to use the word outrageous. Save the uh, definition of outrageous for James Brand, right? Let's all not forget that they make knives, right? So let's calibrate to what we consider uh, outrageous, right? <laughs> I think these probably don't need to be 260 right? Um, but, uh, you know, it's like I, I say in a lot of reviews, it's like, uh, everything could be $20 less and make me $20 happier, right? Or a little bit less, make me a little happier. Rather than say it should be less, which is what everybody's shouting blindly, just wait, you know, everybody's just flailing around saying, that's too much money. It's just, that's not really helpful. Sorry, my voice is still bad. So now my impressions of people complaining are also a little bit silly. <coughs> but um, yeah, you know, on this new guy here, everything's the same, right? I mean, there's no double clutch. The action is just spectacular on these. It's so good. I'm so happy with the, the action. The detent is great. The flipping action is great. There's no... No issue with solidity on lockup, disengagement, there's no lock stick, there's no pivot lash, there's nothing. These are great knives. Overall profile is very beautiful. Ergonomics are nice. They're not forcing you into any one space, right? But it's comfortable wherever your hands land. Pocket clip is a good design. Little tiny bit of a build, but it's not like, eh, it's not going crazy, right? It's just a little bit of a rising. A lot of stuff that I talk about that I really like. This guy has a DLC coating. It's actually a gray DLC coating, which is really cool. By the way, they have more versions of this, right? This is one that's got the gold or the copper shred in it. There's like six, six to eight different versions of the Stratus V2. This one is the Matrix. Hold on here. Scorpion Stratus V2 and Scorpion Matrix, I think is what this guy is up here. Um, so yeah, they have different flavors and stuff and they do... You know, the titanium hardware, so you've got bronze hardware in this. It's nice, right? Kind of wish they did the backspacer in that. But So um, this is all more of the same. It just has, you know, I'm not going to call it a better steel. I'm going to call it, by the community standards, a more preferable steel for whatever reason, M390. And then, you know, the addition of the... Um, T8 screws and the different variants, right? It's cool that he's doing different versions. I love this slate gray. We have the slate gray, the titanium, black hardware and carbon fiber. I think that looks really nice. Um, so this is still great. Bit high on the price, but instead of complaining about the price being too high, um, I, uh, I think what would make me, what would make it feel like it was a higher value um, I still like, like a titanium frame lock like this, it has a somewhat slender, like, like the width here. It's not, it's not super fat, right? But he has the cutout, like the, the, the cutout for the frame lock itself. The frame lock itself is not dominating this side of the knife. Why is that important? Because on a frame lock, you don't want to put your fingers on the lock bar while you're flipping it or it makes it a little harder to flip. Admittedly, this guy, even if I am putting pressure on it, really, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Yeah, it doesn't seem to really make that much difference at all. But in some situations, maybe if you're left-handed, yeah, that's definitely making a difference if you press right there, right? So you do still have to be cognizant of where to put your fingers. I think it would be cool to see an overhaul or evolution of this knife where, yeah, you guessed it, I'd kind of like to see a recessed titanium liner lock in this guy. But if not, that's, of course, just fine. That's definitely going to cost more money to do to mill this area out and recess a, a liner lock into it. Um, I'd also like to see a version of this that has no inserts and perhaps just a texture pattern, right? Or maybe have it contoured and then a texture pattern. Or if we want to leave these areas, pull the inserts out and do some interesting milling, right? Or anodize this area and give it some contrast, right? Um, some more detail work would be cool because we've had the same, I mean, now we, we've got some different inlay, right? This is a different inlay material. Um, and these are like, prefer they're not like real, <laughs> it's 
almost not a real critique. <laughs> because again, I think what we have here, right, this M390 Scorpion with T8 hardware, and in this case we have a DLC coded slate version. Well, I think this is the best looking version of the Scorpion that I've seen, right? Just unbelievably functional. You get a lot of blade. Really nice. It's just, there's a lot of preference here, you know, like stuff that I like is just included in this knife, and it's, it's really nice. I also like the blade profile, this sort of reverse tanto blade is just really nice. Um, so the critiques, these are like personal things. It's not really like a, it, this needs to be changed in order for the value to be, but since we're looking at a $260 price tag, I think it would be cool to see, you know, even more variation so that people can feel like, well, I'm not going to spend 260 on that, but I do like that one. Right. I think that's nice. And I think it's cool that off grid dives is showing off like, Hey, we can do different versions of these, right? Take it a step further and do, you know, not saying that we need to, we don't, it doesn't necessarily need to, I'm, I guess I'm like, when I say like, I want a contoured version or a countersunk liner lock version, that'd be, that'd be an overhaul. That'd be a total, that'd be a whole new project for him. But to start off, since we are seeing different variants now, it would be cool to see the inlays removed and maybe a texture pattern here or some, you know, some interesting milling and then we have some interesting anno work, right? Um, I, uh, I think the OEMs that he's worked with in the past have definitely done things like that um, with, with other stuff. So they're, they're absolutely capable of doing things like that. Again, I would like to, me personally, I would like to see a version where there are no inlays and there is a consistent pattern. Um, diagonal, right? Horizontal or diamond pattern or some texture pattern, whatever it is, I think would be really, really cool. Or faux bolster where you do an area that is just, you know, sort of clean and simple. And then you have a divider line and the rest of it is, you know, to, I think that that would be neat. And then continuing to do the different, you know, black or slate gray DLC or the two-tone blades or the tumbled blades, right? Satin blades, various different colors of, you know, the different anodized, you know, uh, titanium. And I understand like doing that many variants is going to be kind of risky for them because they have, you know, they have to be selling enough to be able to justify doing all of these different variants. But um, something small, like instead of doing the same inlay pattern over and over and over again, it would be cool to see something else. Um, but uh, it's... Again, that's like, that's really just my, my preferences coming out. The knife as it sits is definitely recommendable. It's a bit high in price. Um, you know, if you, if you was to tell me, you know, this is 225, 230, I'd go, yeah, that makes about sense to me. <laughs> uh, that makes about sense. <laughs> that makes good sense to me. Uh, 260 bucks, it feels a bit high, but it, again, it's not outrageous. Uh, I'm very happy that we're looking at, um, you know, a steel that's going to make more people happy uh, in the T8 hardware. <coughs> I will say uh, somebody made this comment in my post and I'm going to, uh, in my uh, unboxing video of this, and I, I'm going to agree with them. And also, you know, kind of, it's not, this isn't just with off grid. It's a lot of times this is with the OEMs that are using these, these types of steels. M390 um, and 20CV and 204P. There's a different optimal heat treat for every steel. So for example, right, like 1095, you don't want 1095 uh, Rockwell hardened to 60 plus. 1095, that cake mix performs the best, you know, in terms of what it's supposed to be used for at about 57 to 58. Yeah, your M390 steel that um, benefits from a higher Rockwell hardness uh, at least in terms of what it's designed to do, really should not be below 60. They advertise this at 59, and again, it's not just uh, off grid. It, you know, a lot of a lot of you guys are holding knives right now that are manufactured by uh, OEMs that are in China, and for whatever reason, they just really like that 59 Rockwell mark. I don't know if it costs less or what, but M390 needs to be Rockwell hardened to 60 to 62, truthfully. Um, and why does that one matter? Why does that one, are you saying like 60 over 59? Does it really matter? Yeah. Cause every Rockwell higher, the, it, the steel benefits exponentially, or I'm sorry, 
a steel that would benefit from a higher Rockwell benefits exponentially. In the case of M390, its potential edge retention goes up exponentially for every higher one point of Rockwell, right? Now, lower Rockwell makes it easier to sharpen and makes it a little bit tougher. But M390, like the idea behind it is not necessarily like, you know, they're not trying to emphasize toughness and how easy, like M390 is a steel that benefits best from a higher rock. Well, the ratios anyway, right? Uh, benefits from a higher. So you're getting uh, an increase in difficulty of sharpening and a decrease in toughness, but you're getting a substantial increase in edge retention. So that teeter-totter weighs out in our favor for what we would likely be using M394 if the Rockwell hardness is at 60 or, or a little bit higher, right? You go above 62 and it starts to become so brittle that it's not worth the potential addition to edge retention, or at least that's the way I understand it. So this isn't necessarily a, a, a direct call out for off-grid knives. It's M390 should not be hardened below 60. Uh, I've seen the, the tests of a 59 Rockwell hardened M390 blade versus the exact same blade profile at 60, and it just needs to be 60 to or higher, right? Um, so that would be great, but again, I'm not dumping that on off-grid. It's uh, I, this is going to be the OEM. You know, that's who's heat treating the blades. Um, it's going to be that, that's they, they need to have that fixed. That should be across the board, um, but. At 59, right, it's, it lists this at 59 on their website. Um, will this still function the way that you want it to? Oh, yeah, definitely. You might not get the same edge retention as, a, a you know, an M390 blade that's at 61, right? I'm not going to tell you guys that this isn't going to function, isn't going to work properly. 59 is not an offensive, uh, you know, it's not outrageous, right? There's, I'm not trying to spark a firestorm over this, right? 57, 58, that's a slap in the face, right? 59 is like right there. It's like, uh, it should be just a little bit higher, right? But, you know, these companies that their, their heat treat, you know, for M390 is coming back at like, you know, 57, 58, in some cases, 56 or 55. Oh God, it's not, it's nothing at that point, right? It's just a goofball steal. Um, so right there on the line is what I'm saying. But I do really like this design, and I, I'd like to see more uh, of the Scorpion in the future. So very, very cool. That's my; those are my thoughts on this. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, check out the uh, the Scorpion. This is very cool, and I think you guys will be really, really happy with it. I just wanted to get my thoughts in and be as honest as possible about it. Thanks again to Off Grid Knives for sending this in for me to take a look at, or these in for me to take a look at. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.